the summary of what happened was, I guess, towards the end of the event, you know, you had people who were breaking down and leaving. Some people came in from off the street. And this is if I understand what was told to me twice correctly. Mm. Um, so don't quote me. Uh, but supposedly they were going around and fishing for cash boxes or just looking for whatever. And apparently the guy, one of the guys had a magnet on a stick, Mm -hmm. which came in handy when I lost my car's light bulb down in the light thing. And when I had to rebuild steps and I lost a screw down on the ground underneath the steps and didn't want to move a whole staircase. But apparently, uh, apparently that magnet is strong enough to find a cash box, which I guess apparently the guy was grabbing into their cash box as they, uh, so toy pizza is a couple plastic pizza. Oh yeah. Toy P- yeah. Toy, toy pizza is a different company. Toy pizza is a whole different company. That's a, uh, which we saw that the one dude for the first time in forever at five points. I guess because I confused it thinking about toys that are pizza and their their main guy is a toy pizza. Anyway, uh, th- so there are a couple, um, Jordan and... Um, Sarah? Yeah. And uh, I guess they were talking to another booth and they came around and uh, saw this guy going into their cash box and the other people who were with the thief guy were talking to the person manning the booth so it was all this orchestrated um it's a distracted yeah you know, tactic they're just distracting and, and uh yeah they they saw the dude and i think he didn't re- didn't realize they were the people whose cash he was uh going through um you know they go and approach him and Then he goes from taking the cash to trying to take the whole cash box. And uh, something happened where cash box is on the ground. They have the book bag that he was wearing. And uh, in the, you know, they somehow he still got the cash and they bunch of people are chasing this dude. And... um, that's as far as I know, I think. Yeah, I mean, the whole, whole situation is, you know, just wild. But, you know, I don't know. You know, it, it, with the, you know, at that point, people are breaking down. They're not watching who's coming in and out. I mean, for the rest of the time, people have lanyards and, you know, you kind of know who are the, the actual event goers, things like that. It's just one of those happenstances that, you know, now everyone will just know, you know, now you got to be aware that that stuff's going to probably happen. I mean, we've had stuff like that happen at Decon where, you know, there's been people walking around just taking stuff from multiple booths, you know, so it's it's unfortunate, but it's, you know, it's reality, but, you know, we were just say, you know, happy to hang with them after and kind of, you know, quell as much of the situation that we could, you know, and get their minds off of it, but community, you know, came around and helped them out, you know, about you know, a couple of weeks later, so you know that that wrong was righted, but you know still happened, unfortunately. Right, and so the 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 point of bringing it across is that there's people out there that just don't care um, how much time or work you've put into things that they're just going to, for whatever reason, think they're entitled to just take what's not theirs and um yeah like what happened with the the decon that was uh 2019 in this instance you had um like a mom and two sons one son was in a wheelchair the other one was i don't know i think he was pushing the wheelchair and they had this whole whole smooth thing like they stole from us they stole from toy pizza they stole from bob's burgers toy chronicle oh yeah toy chronicle slash five points fest 
booth. Um, oh, I know there's more. I just can't remember at the moment. You know, it's a, it's a really interesting thing because uh, I noticed... So in our instance, it wasn't a custom or anything, which, you know, I guess I feel better that it was just like a double that was a chase that we were selling versus like something that we put time into. Um, but it's interesting because uh, I had put on an inflatable alien costume <laughs> and uh, I had a look at the video of when I left doing that because the video starts from inside the booth to outside the booth and you could see the thing there. And then you, uh, you know, I come back and, oh, hey, oh, hey, did anything sell while we were gone? No, you know, that, you know, there's, there's some people looking, but nothing, nothing crazy. Oh, okay, because we weren't gone long, like 15 minutes. And uh, Serge was doing a signing with Quicks at mm -hmm. that time. Right. So I had gone over to, and Martian had two booths. They had the Martian Toys booth, and then they had Mothership. Right. Or were you at Roto Fuji when you did the signing with Quicks? We were at Mind's Eye, maybe. Oh, uh, may, maybe you yeah, were. Yeah, yeah, no, we were at the Mind's Eye. So okay, that's, that's what it was. We were at Mind's Eye because we were we were still signing both of them. But the Mind's Eye was the Neo Tokyo, the, okay. pink, the pink one. So, yeah, that pulled me over there for that time. And then, yeah, I remember you walking around to film in the suit. So, so then, yeah, they just struck probably Chad because he was watching his booth or side of the booth. Oh. Um, it's probably what it was. He was watching his stuff, and then our stuff generally was just being unattended. Oh, no, I was there. So I was... Um either putting the costume on or taking the costume off when these folks went by. And I I only know for sure that it was them besides when they hit uh, the five points in Toy Chronicle booth. Surge was there. Yeah, I was at that one. So we were we happened to be at two of the strikes. I I only know because of the look in the wheelchair guy's eye where to me, he looked sad, and it might have been because I was going out of my way to be nice to him, because, I don't know, yeah, you know, mean. I don't know what he's dealing with, but he's in a wheelchair, so, but I had said, okay, you know, thanks, you know, hope to see you by again or something, mm -hmm. and he, he also looked real similar to, there's a dude local to us in a wheelchair, and he just looks similar to that guy, so that's why... That's why, unfortunately for them, I won't forget what they look like. Yeah. And um, I think I saw them this year, and wheelchair guy wasn't in a wheelchair. But I made sure to say it really loud. Hey, I think that's those dudes from 2019. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, who knows? He could have, like, that could have just been, like, when we go to Disney, you know, our one, our one, uh, our one roommate at the time, you know, he didn't need a wheelchair, but he said, "Oh, just get a wheelchair. You know, you can be our. I'll be your fast pass or whatever under the rides. You know, so like they could have came into the event and just had the wheelchair. You know, like I, I don't know. You know, again, we never saw him stand up, but like right. maybe they figured that that is you know not a good hustle at this point. Like if you know, it's just even if he was or wasn't, it's the fact that like the mom would go up to the booth, ask questions, ask questions." And get you to the opposite side of the table and or booth. Because that's what happened when we were at Toy Chronicle. She was asking about jankies. Where you're talking about something and right. looking at it while and th something over here. There's the one sitting down who's kind of blocking enough of the table so nobody else can be there. It's the one behind him that is pushing him. And there was underneath, I saw, like where you normally put coats or bags or whatever underneath it. That's where they were storing this stuff. So, like... They took some, like, jankies at that point. That series was brand new. So they took a few of those. And then they had the specialty one that was, like, released. And that's what she was talking about. And then, so it was um, the specialty, which I only know because I had to reorganize my shelves. It was Janky King 5.5. Mm -hmm. And King 5 is the uh, guy in a chicken suit. 
and 5.5 was like a black chicken. Mm-hmm. And I don't, it's one of the ones I don't have. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just crazy. We were there for at least two of them, but then when they took the Gundam, like that stuff is just, that's one, that's, that's oh, yeah. is completely absurd. Those things are like massive. Yeah, it was like a, thing. like a one foot, uh, one foot or 16 inch, I'm not sure. And it was um, a collaboration between 1,000 toys and toy pizza. Toy pizza, yeah. I almost said plastic pizza. Plastic pizza yeah. well, I hope they do a collab at some point. That'd be interesting. Um, Mech out the pizza guy. But the... Uh, it was, you know, like a artist proof, like original. So it wasn't the actual release yet. Mm-hmm. Something that you would probably never actually sell. But they had it out to just try to get interest for maybe pre-orders down the road or whatever. And then Bob's Burgers, it was an original animation cell. Who knows if Bob's Burgers had like a hidden camera or anything just for. But I don't. I don't think Bob's Burgers was there this past year. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, with knowing who's coming this year with like the Sony Entertainment animation, all that stuff, like if they're selling product, you know, hopefully they'll have a better eye on stuff like that, unless it's more so to just like promote spider verse 2 and things like that you right. know like the how the like the interactive video game areas are there was um uh forgot what i was gonna say but yeah uh, uh that's what it was the uh decon this year is back to the two rooms so for folks um shopping it i mean be ready to go through like 900 booths which you know pace yourself like everyone deserves a piece of your attention because it's so expensive now like i'd hate for people even the you know okay the artist alley doesn't cost as much as a booth but like they're still paying the fly there um same i mean i i same thing with like there's the enamel pin area um you know, I know they're getting into NFTs, but like, uh, but back to five points. You're talking about the two rooms and everyone get, oh. getting their time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Back to Decon, even though this is the five points episode. Well, it's kind of five points and or road to Decon. So. Yeah. yeah. This is the beginning of road to Decon. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, I mean, it's. Our plane tickets were over 500 bucks. The hotel was, I don't know, six or 700. Um, I don't know if we're allowed to say what the booths are, but it's over a grand. Um, so, and your product cost. Yeah. Plus, you know, the stuff you're making and all that. So, um, I hope that the people who are going, to decon like really check out everyone's stuff i don't care if you don't buy anything from me it doesn't i'm not really worried about that enough people buy our stuff to make it worth our time to continue doing right you know i found our uh a screenshot i was trying to clear out photos off my computer and it was a bill from 2013 it wasn't a bill. It was the email, and it was like, "Reserve your booth for Decon Early Bird, three fifteen. If you wait till closer to the show, three fifty. And where I was like, "Wow, yeah. like our plane tickets almost doubled the cost of the whole booth back then." So, you know, it's just uh, such a big deal for the people who are showing stuff there that. I encourage you to not just only see the biggest artists and then just like leave. Yeah. You especially, know. I mean, if you're, especially, you know, if you get the whole weekend pass and then you're not even taking the time to walk around and see things, it's kind of a waste of your own money too. But like these are giant rooms. And now that you made, now that's open to two, like just, even if it's okay, well this, you know, hall a or whatever it is, you know, 
that'll be Saturday outside of going to maybe your, you know, obviously your favorite person, wherever they're going to be. Yeah. Some drops, but like, that's the way to tackle it. Just go, okay, well I'll go to the drop, get this line, see if I can get this lottery or whatever. Then just tackle it by room. Okay. Well, Saturday, maybe you hit the first room. That's enough to, you know, have lunch, do whatever. And if you're going to Disney later, whatever you're doing. And then, you know, Sunday, then hit the other side because then, you know, because if you're bouncing back and forth, that's when it, you're going to get tired because they are giant. They're giant auditorium rooms like they're they're really and they have people from like literally front to almost the back wall. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, like, you know, some people just get lost too. another trick is, you know, if you're an artist, look at the polls. The polls will say D12 or whatever, you know that is your marker so you use those to tell the people where to find you because the maps unfortunately don't work out too well you well, know yeah. so it's it's easier to just say hey i'm at d12 turn around I'm to the left um we're going to be doing kind of walkthroughs to like lead you where we're going to be at once we know that right so you know stay tuned to what we're doing so we can say like oh well if i came in this door follow the video and you'll find us where we're going to be at. So, you know, we're trying to preemptively strike on that because we've known that we've had even people that are there to buy our stuff specifically, not find us till like Sunday. And I suggest people, um, have something to write notes in. So if you see something at a booth, you know, write down the name of the booth, you know, if you're going to go, if you're thinking about going Going back. back later, um, Maybe do the the name and the booth number. This could be notes in the phone. This could be one of those little like micro notebook things. Mm-hmm. Um, I and then you know even if uh, even if you don't go back later, it also helps you remember if you want to go check out their Instagram or uh, their online store. Not everyone's got the money for you know a. Uh, Two hundred to eight hundred dollar page in the booklet. Mm-hmm. So, you know that's the other thing. Uh, what else? I don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, one of the things that I was excited about Five Points was that it just, it's a big event as far as like importance and collecting and exposure, but the amount of booths is manageable right even at its peak if uh covid didn't happen i feel like it it would still be you know it's grown and stuff but it'd still be manageable to browse right and so that um and the fact that we were able to drive to it right you know like that's that take the plane ticket out of it that helps out greatly um going to decon you have to kind of make it a kind of a workplace situation if you really want to get your money out of it so kind of tie in your vacation to it before or after um we're already saving money for stuff we're gonna buy at that just to you know even at like ten dollars a paycheck you know it's uh yeah decon's like I'm trying to think what I saw three months and 12 days or something away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, you figure even if you put five away, but you're just going to credit card everything while you're there, you do five bucks a week or five bucks a paycheck, you know, it's still some extra money. And the, the price of food there, you know, isn't going to be like cheap. No, and it's, then yeah, it's all tourist area. Yeah, you're paying Disney prices whether you're at Disneyland or not. Mm-hmm. Where like the, with Five Points, there was like, I felt like the food was a pretty affordable. No oh, man, the the food trucks there, you know, like they're comparable to the beer pricing. Yeah, it was fine, and the food was good. Oh, so yeah, like, all set well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, for o- overall, I thought it was fine. It was just like we were just playing with that heat. Oh, yeah. You know, like, that's where, that's really the only negative for me. I mean, the, and without, you know, regardless of the heat, the actual attendees were really nice, you know, like the way, you know, people came to talk to us, talk, you know, about what, you know, 
our time there, what, you know, was behind our toys. Like we had new stuff we were dropping. People wanted to hear the stories. Um, you know, in general, everyone was happy. It's just, you know, it's definitely good know. vibes yeah. besides the thieves, but yeah. they weren't there for five points. So right. Right. They don't count. So at the actual like attendees, you know, they're all I'll come back next year, regardless whether it's here or there. But like, you know, that'll just kind of be in their mind. But again, you know, obviously the weather you can't play with, you know, as, a, you know, a planning or anything. But, you know, once you see it's going to be hot like that, there had to have been uh, other things that had to take place because, like, there were, like, potential medical issues that from that w- heat were going down. Um, you know, when, you know, a couple of vendors, like, mentioning, like, I'll, I don't care. I'm just going to pack up and go because, like, I can't do another day of this, you know, type stuff. And that's, like, midday Saturday. So, you know, hopefully if there's some questionnaire type stuff that went out. They at least, you know aired that out you know so that it could be addressed in case it is at the same place and you do have the the heat to deal with and all that stuff but simple things just like yeah give everyone electric you know plugs you guys are responsible to buy your own fans i think that's at least you know reasonable reasonable, um if you're going to have the bay doors open and not you know pump the ac which you know okay well maybe the cost has to go for ticket for them to you know pay for the ac but if people are comfortable that's not going to be a question, you know, if they enjoy right. the event, they're going to be going there for the event anyway. So, you know, it's stuff that, you know, you can grow on. And again, when it's at a new venue, you're going to have new, new problems, new problems. To figure out. Yeah. yeah. So, but you know, we, we've enjoyed ourselves. Like we haven't gone there due to a, a local event here that was, was always the same weekend once they changed the dates. So we missed out. We were at the first one and we missed out on everything in between. And then the delayed ones for COVID, we didn't even do any of like the the fall ones that they were doing, so we missed out on everything since the first one. And coming back, it's a new venue, so it's a learning process for us too. Um, but like the venue itself wasn't bad, setup wasn't bad, breakdown wasn't bad. Um, it was just that one thing that kind of loomed over the weekend. But you know, we had a good experience, so you know, it's definitely it's, nothing stopped me from wanting to go there. Right. You know, but. Maybe it'll be a different venue next year. You know, if they expand to more people wanting to do it, you know, which a year can change everything. So, oh, yeah. You know. I had uh, I had heard that the Brooklyn Expo Center was cool. So if it's cool, hopefully it's back there. Yeah. And then. Because um, that was we'll by be... my plastic heart when we were over there. It's oh, yeah. Greenpoint. Yeah, it's in that general area. So like. And that area was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. Um. December 10th will be at Creatives Con in New York. Mm-hmm. So New York people Get come ready. hang out. Yeah. We're only going to be there for um two days, one Yeah, day? two nights. Two nights. Yeah. yeah, like we get there I think in the morning or mid I think we get there midday Friday and then we're there Friday night. We got the thing on that Saturday the 10th and then we come back on Sunday. Mhm. Super, super quick, short and sweet. Yep. And we'll each have our own tables there, so that's kind of fun. Oh, yeah. So it's, you know, us with our brand. Because we normally split, but, you know, we were like, well, we can get a table if we're able to. If not, then we'll just split a table like we normally do because it's easy to do. But, you know, at least this one, we can kind of promote ourselves while doing this, you know, because everything still funnels into this. (laughs) Um, Talk smack to each other. Yeah. But, you know, that's it's one of those things where, like, you know, I want I want his brand to, to get where it needs to be while I'm trying to, you know, get mine to where it needs to be. But collectively, you know, we're just always trying to make more steps, more steps. So, like, doing more events, you know, we're like I said, we're adventurers. So, like, we're going to try it. And then if it doesn't work, now we know, OK, well, that didn't work. And then we don't go back to it, but we'll find something else. Right. Um, we always, like, just like to move forward on things. So you know, as positive as you can keep it is how we roll, you know? So like, you know, we're, we're trying to do all this stuff so that we can, you know, we want to go back to Japan. Like that's just been itching. And like, if we can do that next year, it's going down and then we can actually bring you what we're doing right here, but live from Japan, give right. you some episodes from out there, see the toy culture out there. You know, these are the things that like, this is just our starting point for this. We want, you know, we're going to have a lot of other kinds of people too, creative people, uh, people in different industries, um, like Rick. Rick's tied into skateboarding. I have BMX ties. 
Um, we have music ties for DJs, things like that. So we're going to try and, you know, just bring you like a collection of stuff. This and all just kind of to promote ourselves and what we do. We have a lot of interests and um, we kind of want to bring in these kind of things that have interested, you know, what what is behind our art, things that have influenced us, people that we have met along the way that, you know, people may not know and they're awesome people and they do great stuff. So this is kind of just like our jumping off point. So um, we're going to have some shorts, things like that behind the scenes of like what Rick does, little kind of get to know Surge for two or three minutes, you know, time, you know, us painting, you know, hey, we just sat down, had a beer, passed back and forth a canvas. Okay, hey, this canvas is cool. It's a one-off. We'll put it in our stores, you know, or make it, you know, available to those watching. So that's the only way you can get it is if you watch this, contact one of us, you'll get this one-off that nobody will get or you at least have a chance to be the first person to get that thing. Right. Um, so those are the fun things we want to do. Um, you know, that's what like Super Design Land kind of ties in. It's not just like one thing, like we make toys, you know, it's we're creatives but we're creatives on like a giant spectrum um and you know okay well hey we liked your thing with you know when you rick talked about skateboarding oh cool like you know two you know two months from now we may have a skateboarding figure that rick you know drops and you know this is the place to find out about it stuff like that so i make a figure of myself falling there you go (laughs) (laughs) double cast with the x-ray break in the middle oh yeah yeah um do you want to do that yeah, yeah. Um. Since we had some Rio stuff, uh, I brought a piece that wasn't at Five Points. I've had it since Decon last year, but I just never unboxed it because I wanted to save it for a special time, and this is a special time. So Here we go. So um, those that aren't familiar with the Foo Stamps universe, uh, this is uh, the Bastard Wraith. So this was dropped... Uh, Last year at Decon at the Strange Cat Toys booth slash Foo Stamps Rios Palante. Um, so this is his like cyberpunk character. And that's kind of where uh, like a lot of my focus is drawing and stuff like that. So I had to have this figure. Um, the packaging is completely amazing. Kind of see the blueprints of how the toy was made. Um, it actually lights up. I didn't bring uh, the batteries. Um so I'll have to just, you know, feed in something of it actually lighting up uh, in post. But it's a nice metallic shine. Just use your imagination. And that just fell. I totally forgot that was broken. Um, that just lost a thousand dollars value. Yeah, that, that's how it goes. So um, with this, he had, you know, nice certificate of authenticity. There were a hundred of them. And then it came with a signed card. So if you did the pre-order, you actually got the character kind of stat card with it, which is really cool. Um, so those are just kind of two fun add-ons and it is a foil card, which is even better too. So you already had that like at starting, um, packaging is completely amazing. Kind of opens up, feels like a comic book. Um, I like the colors. Yeah. The colors are amazing. So it says in, in the not uh, too distant future, a collision of metal and flesh calling itself bastard wraith. Um, packaging is always prime. So, you know, foam protectors. This is real cool because the actual figure comes with uh, like a cowl. So almost like his, his like outworld scarf that you can wrap around it. It has a little wiring inside so you can actually like form fit it around the neck, which is really, really cool. And it's like tattered because he's supposed to be from like a dystopian type future. And so here he is. So this is, I think all the other ones of Rios's were resin. This is the first vinyl production of one of his characters. Um, super high detail, bright colors, has, you know, you know, the actual, like, uh, street feel, but, you know, futuristic, cool metallic, the actual metal is, you know, a metallic paint on him, um, and then it comes with these two swords of his, so he has his two swords, they fit in the hands, um, I can't remember if they attach to the backpack or not, but I know in his art, they actually fit in the backpack, so... He comes with the two blades, and in the backpack, there's a pod um, that you put the batteries in. The backpack along the pink actually lights up, and then it also lights up the, uh, the like, eye in the top, like, almost the Mega Man, like, it looks like a Mega Man cannon, something like that. So, those, like, glow inside, so it actually has, like, a pink, uh, pink hue to it when it glows. Um, so, yeah, it's just, if, if you're not familiar with his stuff, yeah, go over to uh, Instagram. I know he's at Foo Stamps. 
Uh, the other one is uh, Rio. I think it's uh, Rio Spalante. Um, but yeah, if you want like really cool stuff, see what he's doing. He has a, a release with. Um, Give me that. Yeah, he has a release with uh, Big Pun coming up. So he actually did a style. So uh, it's like a tribute piece to Big Pun, but in his food stamp style. So that's coming out, and he has countless other characters and uh, comic books. So he has the actual comic books that are telling the story. Uh, of these characters and then he releases some and then the comic book comes out and then he releases some um so it's really it's a really cool way to keep up um if with with how how the pieces are being uh, released and why they're being released in in a certain order the detail of the sculpt is amazing i mean even down to the blade i mean look there's even like the screws even on the blades are like like it's it's like if you're if you're a fan of like oh. Todd McFarlane and like the Spawn toys and how like some of the minuscule details are with the actual toys, like the three D sculpt for this had to be like absolutely crazy for the kind of detail and like the folds and even like all the armor plating. It's it's an amazing piece. Like the clothing has realistic, um, like not symmetrical. Yeah, it's like. Um, it yeah, it's, really it, looks like it could be cloth yeah, from the, a distance. Yeah, the asymmetry of how the folds like lay, it's really cool. Like even the, I mean, they're just, even the like jogger pants, you know, like they taper and it looks really, really cool down to the tennis shoes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm kind of amazed. I've never, because I remember they had it up like on a stand mm-hmm. or in a case and I, I never looked at it that closely. I just said, hey to him, talked to him a bit, but yeah, that lights up. So that like textured pink in the middle, that's the backpack part that lights up. I can't remember if it's on the box or not. Um, no, it's not actually on the box. But yeah, but how, how the actual eyeball on the box looks like it's lit up, um, that's how that and the backpack lights up. I think it just takes like watch batteries, I think. I really like the splashes of bright colored amongst something that would normally be Maybe not monochromatic, but it's really like neutral and earth tony yeah. with bright colors yeah, splashed you know, in. You know, that's like the cowls, and you wrap that around the neck, you know, and then it has that like, you know, Mad Max type outworld feel. So, yeah, that's a cool addition. Yeah, because I have the, uh, I got the screw face. I have the, here's this. I actually have two screw faces. Oh, watch your hand, almost cut your finger <laughs> off. <laughs> I have two screw faces, so I got the uh, the BLM one, but I got the Puerto Rico one with him raising the fist. I have the screw face, and then I ended up getting the Dega Dead, which is the Quicks, the Quicks collab with him, where I, I, I think it's Bodega Blade and uh, the uh, the Tech got merged together as one figure. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so that's like I got that one, and then because that one has that futuristic feel, um, then I got this. I had you know I had to add this one. Um, I was probably being a hater. Probably. I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> I, I genuinely, I, I can't picture that. Like I must have just missed it or. Yeah, it's it's definitely broke. like I was able to get on it and then like it disappeared super fast and then like you know the resale value of that thing was crazy and it was just funny watching people try to get it. So. Um, yeah, it's probably. But yeah, one like of the, my broke moments. But yeah, like quality of this is amazing. Um, there's a similar type cyberpunk feel that, uh, strange cat and in prime retrust, um, another one of our friends did. So that's his soul breaker. So if you kind of oh, like yeah. this style, they are going down the route of like more cyberpunk, like dystopian future type toys. So it has like, you know, anime high detailed comic look, um, which is great. So if you're into that type stuff, um, like watch strange cat, cause it seems like that's where they're going. Um, we have the super cutesy stuff, but then like on the side, it seems like there's like kind of bumping up to this kind of level of things, which is great. Like if you're just going to buy one piece and even if it's 150 to 200, when you look at this thing, you can see so much detail and, um, they're really well made. And like, even in a case, they look even better because like you'll start seeing them from a different angle. Like, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize I had that detail in it. And that, um, soul breaker, I pre-ordered the kid robot one. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think there was three colorways, I think, at this point. Um, there was something that in Prime We Trust had posted that I was um, so moved by what it was that I actually messaged him. And I was like, 
That thing's awesome, dude. Yeah, he has a series of them. I know he drew. I don't remember what it was though, offhand um, at the moment. What was it? I when yeah, like mid COVID, he started drawing to like this character. So he has one that's like a thinner one that has like a, a scythe. Then he had one with like a big body, and then he had the Soul Breaker. So it looked like there were three of them. Sure. So there's a potential that that may be a series re- released. Because prior to that, it was his Dirty Snow figure, which was the Snow White. Oh, I forgot the, he did that. Yeah, taking off the top, and um, it's a, it's like a, one of the sparrows with a spray can, and the, the spray behind it is like covering her up in the right spots. Yeah, um, that figure's awesome. Yeah. So that, you know, yeah, Prime Prime is great, and he just puts out really, really good, good work that, you know, they can play off of and turn into a toy, it really translates well, well, you know, once the sculpt is made, so. So then, I think we can safely conclude our five points thing. Yeah, like I said, five points was cool, and we're looking forward to next year. Oh, yeah. Um, because we have stuff in store already <laughs> cooking, which is going to oh, be yeah. awesome. Um, and yeah, so we're going to be doing snippets, some some maybe like 10 minutes, some maybe another longer in between. We're going to start hopefully talking to people that are also decon goers, both uh, mo- more so attendees and vendors. Um Maybe, you know, they could talk about what they're planning. Um, so you just kind of get to know people and also what they suggest doing. You know, any kind of tip for people that are consistently going, they may be like, oh, well, I find if you come at this time or, you know, set a thing at like, okay, this person is doing a signing at this time, you know, so you can kind of move around uh, better. So you're not just waiting in a line and missing out somewhere else. Um, I think that's the stuff that we'll be able to offer. And then also, yeah, you know, what we have in store because... We behind the scenes have all these plans. We have like, you know, okay, this got checklist. Okay, this so is done. Stuff. This is done. Okay, now we can do this. Okay, now we can collaborate on something. Let's bring in this person. So um, hopefully the decon this year that we're offering is not only just Rick and Serge. We're going to have a bunch of collabs on our booth. So if you have a favorite artist... They may have stuff at our booth as a collab, and there may be the first, well, it will be the first time to get it, let alone they may be specialty pieces just for decon, and then they're just gone. We're not going to be remaking them. There may be a different colorway of something, um, but we're really trying to step up what we did last year, and last year was our first time really pushing our own art um, from our universes and showing the resin work we've been doing. Um, and since then we've expanded upon that. Um, so hopefully, you know, it's a, it's a really good experience. Come by the booth, hang out. We always do giveaways. Um, we always give away extra stuff with purchased as a thank you, um, drawings, extra art pieces. Um, you know, sometimes just a little bundle of fun little resin pieces. You can kind of trinkets put out stuff like that. We love doing glow in the dark. So if you're glow in the dark, a UV fan, definitely come by what we're, see what we're doing. Cause man, yeah, that's what we always do. <laughs> so, um, like, all of that's glow in the dark. Yeah. 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 We kind of, we love the glow. And then we also, we're, we'll have people coming over like playful gorilla wants to do some live art again. He said he wants to come over. He had fun last year. Um, maybe we'll have better camera angles this time to, oh, yeah, to we'll film what's going trick on. It out. Um, so that might be, you know, that'll turn into content for later. You kind of, see some first person view of everyone kind of just collaborating on things together, kind of brainstorm fun session. And then those pieces will be available. Um, probably and there's probably post and, you know, at the event. And there's a, a good amount of time between now and decon. So if you're an artist yourself and you want to figure out some kind of collab, it doesn't have to be like a five to ten figure thing could just be a couple of things we could figure something out so hit us up oh yeah yeah and you know like collaborative efforts are great sometimes it opens up you know new possibilities you know something that you didn't see somebody else may see and you're like oh man i never thought about attacking my figure that way you know okay cool let's make three of them and see how they do and then if they're gone immediately now you know you know hey maybe we need to revisit this or you know expand upon this it's really cool and you know we like collaborating with people like we like shotgun sessioning ideas and like, okay, maybe it's not right now. Maybe it's a three months down the road thing. And we'll like, maybe, right. cr- you know, we'll crowd, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go put out, you know, like a little poll. Hey, do you guys, would you guys be into this? And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go and crowdsource ideas of like, yes, we'd like that, but maybe in glow in the dark blue. Okay. Well, cool. Like let's mock it up and see how it goes. And then, and then I think 
I don't like any of it unless it glows in the dark. Yeah. And then that's another pull. Yeah. <laughs> that's when I fell in the other. Right. Make it glow in the dark. Yeah. You usually have to make something glow in the dark or at least offer the option of a glow in the dark colorway. That's kind of like it's become the thing where like people's collections now are just like glow in the dark, which is great. And it's great to see like personal resin pieces growing in people's collections. You know, yeah. like as opposed to just like, oh, I missed, I missed out on the production and piece. And then like six months later, oh, suddenly another, all these pieces that were sold out are suddenly available. Like, it, you know, like that's kind of a bad turn. So like now you're not interested in that piece. So, but these artists that are producing their own stuff, it, it's, it's a lot of times easier accessible, at least to get something. You may not be able to get all of them if they do limited runs. Because, you know, they're making them small because they're producing them all themselves. Right. But you usually have a chance to get something of theirs. Um, where if it's just, you know, kind of mass produced, you're either going to get it and pay more or it's going to sell out. And then, you know, suddenly become flipper price stuff. And then, you know, now you're now you're SOL because now you're paying double for something that unfortunately, you know, you don't have now. But like the the want for it has probably gone away, but you're still paying double if it's something you really want. So. Yeah, it just becomes a crazy situation at that point. Yeah. Well, this concludes this episode. We're out.